Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house, if that's the way you want to do it. And today we're talking about preserving your harvest. Um, I picked uh, some vegetables out of the garden today. Got some cucumbers, got some okra, some banana peppers, some tomatoes. Uh, way too much for me to eat right now. I can't eat this all stuff before it goes bad, so I need to can it up, preserve it for winter time. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do all that. It, all this stuff is high acid food. The tomatoes are actually on the verge of being high acid, but we'll add a little bit of acid to them. What that means is that we can water bath can them. We don't need to, um, we don't need to pressure can them. We're going to be pickling the cucumbers and the peppers. We're going to be water bath canning the tomatoes. I'm going to show you exactly how to do all that. First things first, I'm going to get these tomatoes taken care of. Um, well, first things first, you want to get your canner going because it takes a very long time to get your canner up to heat and to get it boiling. And what I've done is I've taken the jars. I'm assuming I'm going to get probably two jars of tomatoes, two jars of, uh, of uh, pickles, and a jar of peppers. So I put my jars full of water in my, ba in my water bath canner and I'm going to wash them off first. About that much water over the top of the jars. That does a couple of things for me. Um, first of all, it sterilizes my jars. But secondly, because they're in there, I know exactly how much water I need. I've done this before where I didn't have my jars in the canner and I estimated how much water I needed and it wasn't enough. And then when you go to actually put your jars in there, it doesn't cover the jars. It needs to cover them by about a half an inch uh, when we actually go to process. So I've got this up to heat. Um, I'm holding it just below boiling so my water doesn't boil away. I've got another pot of water boiling right here that I'm going to use for the tomatoes. And uh, we're going to use that to uh, blanch the tomatoes so they peel real easy. And then I've got a, uh, uh, did I say a jar? It's a pot. <laughs> I've got another pot full of uh, vinegar water. It's a brine that we're going to be using for the cucumbers and uh, the peppers. Um, this is one and a half quarts of, is that, yeah, four quarts, yes. One and a half quarts of vinegar and two and a half quarts of water. So it's four quarts total, one and a half vinegar, two and a half water. Now, the things that we're going to be putting in the jars are to flavor the pickles and and you know, going in with the tomatoes, well, more so the pickles, it, you, you can play with that. You can do that. You can change that up however you want. If you don't like garlic, leave it out. If you like garlic, add a lot more garlic if you want, however you want to do that. Do not change the vinegar to water ratio in the brine. It's important that you use an approved recipe whenever you can things and, because the risk of botulism is very serious and very, very dangerous. So this is going to ensure that we're, we've got plenty of acid to be able to um, water bath candies and make them shelf stable. All right, so let's get started with the tomatoes. Things are starting to heat up here and I wanna, I can process these all at the same time in the canner. So I kinda gotta get them all done close to the same time. So let me bring you in close and I'll show you what we're gonna do with these tomatoes to uh, get them ready. All right, so it's pretty easy to get these uh, tomatoes ready. We're gonna end up peeling them. What I like to do is I like to make a little bit of an X in the bottom of them and just a little bit, that's all. I mean, just a little. That's gonna make the skin easier to peel off whenever we get done. Um, I like to core them before I, I uh, blanch them. You can do it afterwards if you want to. This, uh, you can use a paring knife if you want to. This little tool is called a tomato shark. I'll make sure that I've got one of those in my Amazon shop. If you don't have one, they're fantastic for corn tomatoes. You just take the core out, that's it. So this tomato is ready to go into the, uh, to the water to be blanched. Let me show you something else here real quick. This tomato right here has got some blemish on it, some cracks at the top. We're not gonna wanna, we're gonna wanna take that out but it's gonna be easier to do after I get the peel off the tomato. So I'm gonna go ahead and core it and then cross it at the bottom and we will come back after we peel it and we'll cut these bad spots out. It's still fine to can. The rest of the tomato is still fine. One thing else I'll say about um, canning tomatoes is, you know, really paste tomatoes are the best. So those are gonna be like your Romas and uh, these are Amish paste. Uh, those are gonna be the best for canning, not a beefsteak tomato. All right, so let me get the rest of these done and then we'll move on to the uh, blanching step and show you how that, what that looks like. All right, so to uh, peel these tomatoes, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna blanch them in some boiling water for 30, 60 seconds. Then we're gonna move them over to some cool water. I've got some cool water in this uh, bowl over here. So let me get my ladle here and we'll take a couple of them. And this is, uh, I mean, this is the easiest way to peel a tomato, in my opinion. So they go right into the boiling water. We're gonna give them 30 seconds. Oh, be careful, I got vinegar boiling back there. We're heating up anyway, that's like mace. Let me get one or two of these done. I'll show you exactly how this works.
Okay, so when they boiled for, like I said, 30, 60 seconds, we're just gonna move them over to the ice water bath. Let them cool off a little bit so we can handle them. And once they're cooled off, the uh, skins pretty much just slip right off. You just grab them and just peel them right off. They come super easy. So that's how you peel a tomato. And uh, these are ready to can now. So we're going to uh, get the rest of these done real quick. And then we'll get a jar out and uh, we'll start filling them. All right, so I got the tomatoes all peeled. They're all ready to uh, start packing the jars. So let me get a couple of jars ready here. I like to use wide mouth jars uh, for tomatoes. Actually, I like to use wide mouth jars for just about everything. But they've been full of water in my canner here, um, boiling to... Uh, make sure but I need to get all this water out of these jars so I'm gonna take it over to the sink dump it out and bring it back and uh, then we'll get to packing the jars now you don't want to pour the, the uh, water from these jars into your canner because then you'll, you'll end up overflowing your canner uh, whenever you get the uh, tomatoes in there so let's start uh, let's start packing some jars here and I'll show you basically how to do this and then uh, then we'll go on and get from there um, pretty easy. I mean, check your tomatoes. Make sure there's no major blemishes on them or anything like that. Drop them in there. Might be good to use a funnel. I'm not going to mess with it. I'll just wipe the rims off really good when I'm done. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. We're just going to fill this jar up as full as we can get it. Cut any bad spots off the tomatoes as you go to put them in. Oh, I forgot to peel that one. There we go, that's better. Fill, uh, go ahead and smash them down just a little bit. Uh, need a knife real quick. I think we're pretty close to full. Might be able to get another small one in there. You want to pack them pretty full. Um, if you have to cut a couple of tomatoes in half or something like that, go ahead and do it because uh, these are going to shrink up quite a bit in the canning process. All right, I think we're pretty full on this one. So let me set this to the side, pack the other jar, and then we'll come back and show you what we're going to do next. All right, so I've got my jars packed with tomatoes now. Um, what I'm going to do, ooh, I need to add some, uh, what am I thinking? I was going to fill them with that. I need to add some lemon juice. We need to add some acid. Uh, like I said, tomatoes are just on the verge of being safe to water bath can. So, I mean, just high enough acid to water bath can. So for a, uh, a quart jar, which these are, oops, I need to add two tablespoons of lemon juice, or I want to say... I'll have to check the recipe again to be sure. You can use citric acid, but I can't remember exactly how much citric acid it is. I want to say it's a teaspoon for a quart. Now, if you were just doing a pint, you would just need one tablespoon of uh, lemon juice instead of two. So we'll add that. Then we need some salt. We're going to use a teaspoon of salt. Let me go double check my recipe, make sure I'm right on that. So yes, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt to each jar. Now, with uh, when you're using salt in canning, you always want to make sure you use a canning or pickling salt, not regular table salt. So, teaspoon of salt. And a teaspoon of salt. Then we're going to top these off with some uh, hot water. And I'm just using the same water that I boil the tomatoes in to begin with. There's no reason to use different water. I mean, it's tomatoes. It's not going to hurt anything. We're going to fill these jars up with hot water up to about a half an inch from the top. Now, something you want to do as you fill these up, something like this or a chopstick or whatever, make sure you've got your, all your utensils clean. We're going to stick that down in the jar. Hopefully you can see that. You make sure we get all the air bubbles out of, out of here because otherwise you'll end up with a jar that's hardly any liquid in it and that's not good okay so the water dropped down a little bit we need just a touch more water not much the nice thing about um, this little canning tool is that it 
will measure how high you're up. So a half inch is, can't read the numbers. There's a half inch right there. So you can go like this and see easily that we're right at a half inch. You probably can't see that on film, but I can see it. Um, so the next thing I need to do now that that's ready is I got a clean rag over here with just some water on it. I'm going to wipe the rim. Make sure I've got all the tomato stuff off the rim. Make sure it's nice and clean. Gives a good seal for the, um, the lid to seal on. Probably a little overkill, a little more than I need, but oh well. We've got two lids right here. These have been washed and they're ready to go. Used to be you would need to uh, boil your lids or they recommended you boil your lids. They've since said there's no longer a need to do that. So the lid goes on and then a ring. And when we put this ring on, we just want to go finger tight. You don't want to crank it down. Just finger tight, just snug is all you need. And then these can go back into the water bath canner and they can sit there until I get the uh, pickles and those kinds of things done. So let me get this other jar done and then we'll move on and uh, show you what I'm doing with the cucumbers. All right, so I'm going to be pickling the uh, cucumbers and the uh, okra together. I just, they just they work the same way. They have the same spices. Uh, it just really works well for me to just pickle them in the same jars. Um, what I'm going to do is add some things to a couple of jars here before I start working on my cucumbers, get the jars ready. I need a clove or two of garlic for each one. I like garlic, so I'll put two or three cloves of garlic. All I need to do is peel it. I don't need to uh, dice it up or chop it up or anything like that. I say all I need to do is peel it. That's a little bit tricky. There we go. There's one. Okay, so I've got the garlic in there. To each one of these, I'm also going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of powdered alum, alum, however you pronounce that. Where is it at? This helps with crispness. Um, and then a... Uh, eighth of a teaspoon of what I'm using here is pickle crisp. Just kind of helps to keep the pickles a little bit crispier so they don't get um, mushy. You can also use grape leaves, um, oak leaves, anything with a lot of tannin in it will also help with uh, keeping them crispy. Another thing I do with my cucumbers is um, I soak them in an ice water bath. So I, these have been soaking in ice water for several hours before I pull them out. The only thing I need to do, especially with these smaller pickles like this, is just cut off the blossom end. So the blossom end is on uh, the opposite side from where the stem is. And I'm just going to cut off just a little piece of it. That's all. Um, I don't know that it makes that big of a difference, but that's kind of the common wisdom. Oh, by the way, I've got a habanero here. And I'm going to throw that in one of my jars because that will be my jar. I will be happy with that. Um, all right, so I'm just going to cut off the blossom end and then we're going to pack them in the jars. So let me get these jars packed and then we'll come back and show you the uh, next step. Get a couple of pieces of okra in here. Oh, for the okra, let me tell you about that. I just cut off the end of the stem. That was actually a little bit shorter and I usually cut them. Um, just cut off the end of the stem. Um, you may have to do some cleanup work right around the edge. So I'll kind of cut off any like bad spots, but I don't want to really slice the okra up. I want to leave it whole. Sometimes there's a little bit of, well, like, I don't know what you call it, just leaves and stuff right there around the edge. And that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Packing a jar is very much like um, like doing a jigsaw puzzle. There's not really much rhyme or reason to it. You just kind of uh, just pack them in there and see how well you can get them to fit. Oh, I almost forgot. One of the most important parts is dill. And just, uh, I don't know, a bunch of dill. However much dill you want. I like dill quite a bit. So I'd throw in quite a bit of it big handful in uh, each each jar just stuff it down in there and the flowers are fine if you don't have dill you can use dill seed uh, you'd probably want somewhere around a, I don't know maybe a half a teaspoon of dill seed in the jar all right so we've got our uh, brine our vinegar and our water boiling over here on the stove I'm gonna bring it over and we're gonna fill these up pretty much the same way we did the uh, <coughs> the tomatoes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that, I swear you what, hot vinegar. It'll clean your sinuses out. And very much like the uh, tomatoes, we're going to fill these up to half inch. Uh, from the top of the uh, jar.
Okay, we're going to uh, shift things around a little bit, try to get rid of all the air bubbles. May have to refill after we do that. And I do need a little bit more in that jar right there. And then very much like with the tomatoes, we're gonna wipe the rim off here. Let me get rid of this bowl of mace here in my face. There, try this again. We're gonna wipe the rim off just like we did with the tomatoes. Nice, clean, damp uh, towel. You should use a paper towel, works just fine. And then let's get our lids and our rings. We'll get these sealed up and they can go in the canner as well. All right, so the banana peppers, we're gonna use the uh, same brine that we used for the um, for the pickles, pickled cucumbers and whatnot. And uh, what I've added to the jar is a couple of cloves of garlic. Um, let's see, it was a quarter teaspoon of um, yellow mustard seed. Um, we've got salt in the brine, so you don't really need salt in here. A little bit of sugar is good, maybe a tablespoon of sugar. And uh, if I had dill seed, or excuse me, if I had celery seed, I would have added uh, about a, a quarter teaspoon of celery seed to this as well. I didn't have that, so I'm gonna leave that out. Um, I'm just gonna cut these banana peppers in rings. I like them in fairly, good size, fairly thick rings because they do cook up and get pretty soft. And if you cut them too small, they kind of almost get mushy in my opinion. Um, nothing special about this. I'm just gonna cut them in rings. I'm gonna throw them in there until I fill the jar up. So let me get that done and then uh, we'll come back. All right, so we've got everything in jars. I didn't show you, I got two little pint jars of banana peppers back here in the back. I didn't show you filling those up because it's the same process. You just put the brine in there until a half inch from the top, wipe the rim, put the lid on. You know, it's the same thing we went through. Now, I, I did add a jar. Um, I did a jar of uh, sliced pickles, dill slices, so I can make uh, fried pickles with them. And I'm afraid that I probably put a little too much water in here now. When I set this down, I'm going to have to probably take some water out. But anyway, basically, I'm just going to drop the jars in there. And it's... It's a little too much, not much too much, but it does have a tendency to boil over whenever you, um, looks like I got a jar that may have broke or something because I got seeds coming up here. Well, well, we'll find out when we're done. Sometimes that happens, nothing to panic about. Okay, so you only need about a half inch water over the top of that. What I'm gonna do is close this up and I'm gonna bring this to a boil. And once it starts boiling, we're gonna start our timer. Uh, the pickles will need 15 minutes, and I could probably get away with 10 minutes on the pint jars, but um, I'm gonna go with 15 minutes on the pickles. The tomatoes are gonna to need about 45 minutes. So let me set my timer here. Well, let me make sure it's boiling first. We'll give it a minute to get up to boiling. I'll set the timer, and then uh, when it goes off, we'll come back and uh, show you the next step. All right, so time's up. I did have one jar that broke, so I went down. Uh, let me show you what it looks like here. So maybe you can see this. One of those jars of uh, banana peppers, the bottom of it just busted out. The jar was floating on top before it even started really boiling good, so I just went ahead and pulled it out. There's a piece of glass, of course, the bottom of that jar in there somewhere. It's not going to hurt anything right now, but you're going to want to be careful, of course, while you uh, when you get these things out of here. Now, normally, I would just lift the rack up, turn everything off, but I've still got to cook these, uh, or boil these, um, in fact, I better start my timer there. Uh, tomatoes need to go 45 minutes, so I need to go another half hour with them. I'm a little concerned that I might not have enough water in there when I um, take these jars out, uh, the pickle jars, that it may not be enough for the um, tomatoes. So I've got some water boiling in a pot over here on the side to add to it. And that's a good little tip, is it's a good idea, especially if you're doing big canning sessions, to keep a separate pot of water boiling. It doesn't take nearly as long to heat up a small pot of water as it does to heat up a whole big thing of water. So if you pour cold water in here, it's gonna cool that thing off so much that uh, it's gonna take forever to get the, uh, the, the boil, get it back up to boiling. And especially with uh, you know, me having tomatoes in there, I don't, want to, uh, I don't want to bring the temperature down. I need to keep them at uh, boiling for really the whole 45 minutes. So I need to work fairly quickly here. I'm just gonna set these off to the side, let them cool. And 
we'll get that back up to a boil. What I'll probably have to do, put it on it for a minute, see if it starts boiling. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to start all over with that process and go all 45 minutes with it. And uh, that's what I was afraid of. We're not boiling. All right, well, I should have done these in hindsight. Hindsight, I wasn't thinking. I should have done these in, in separate batches. Should have done the tomatoes separate. So what I'm gonna have to do is get this back up to a boil and then do it for 45 minutes. Um, it really needs to remain at a boil the entire time. And even though these have been in there 15 minutes, because it dropped down below a boil, I'm gonna have to bring it back up to a boil to uh, be, and start the counter all over again. So it won't take long to get it boiling again. But uh, that's pretty much the whole process right there. Let me back this camera up and we'll uh, get this closed out. All right, so I got my pickles over here cooling on the side. They'll start sealing. You'll hear them going popping as they as the lid starts sucking down on there. Leave them for 24 hours. Make sure they're completely cool. Then you can remove the rings off of them. You can just store them however you want to. If you are brand new to canning, you've never done it. Um, always follow a um, you know an approved recipe whenever you're canning. This is a fantastic book. The uh, the blue the ball blue book of and guide to preserving. Fantastic book. It's full of approved recipes. So if you're brand new to canning, even if you're a seasoned canner but you don't have this book, grab a copy of it. Um, I've, I've got it in my Amazon shop, so it's in the description down below. You can go in and uh, check that out. It's got recipes for just about everything. If it's not in this book, then you probably don't need to be canning it. That's my opinion on it anyway. Um, one thing I did forget to mention is I mentioned that the pickle brine itself was a cup and a half, uh, or excuse me, a quart and a half of vinegar two and a half quarts of water. There's also two thirds of a cup of canning salt in there. I forgot to mention that. So other than that, I think that's uh, pretty much it for today. I've got uh, quite a bit of stuff preserved up. I'll probably get just as much more in the next couple of days. Have to do another batch of canning, but uh, that's okay because we'll enjoy this all winter long. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, God bless.